In the UK, someone is diagnosed with a DVT every nine minutes. A clot in the leg that's often just disregarded as a bit of leg cramp or a pulled muscle, but in reality, could be a ticking time bomb for something much, much worse. So it's clearly important to know how to recognize this common problem and when to be worried. I'm a practicing GP and I've helped thousands of patients and lost count of the amount of DVTs I've seen. And today, not only do I want to cover how to recognize a DVT and what happens when they become dangerous, but we'll also cover the hidden reasons they happen and how you can check yourself at home for the signs of one. DVT stands for deep vein thrombosis. Thrombosis is just the medical word for a blood clot and they can happen in any deep vein in the body. Most commonly though, they tend to happen in the deep vein in the back of the leg, down where the calf muscle is. And the clot can cause a traffic jam that leads to a buildup and a back pressure causing leg pain and foot swelling. Now the problems they can cause go way beyond leg symptoms, which we'll talk about later on in the video. But if we want to talk about preventing them in the first place, well, we've got to understand why they actually happen. Clotting is a crucial, vitally important function of our body, and without it, we'd bleed to death from the smallest of cuts. But in this situation, what's causing it to happen within the blood vessel all of its own accord? Well, there are three main factors called Virchow's triad, which play a part here. Let's dive into them. Think of your blood flow like a river. A river is meant to flow along nicely, but what happens when it gets stagnant and the flow is disrupted? Well, that's what stasis is. And when stasis happens to our blood, that's when clots can form. And things that might slow down our blood from flowing include mainly immobility. So the inside of our blood vessels is meant to be nice and silky smooth, but when they get damaged by things like an injury or after having an operation or even certain medical conditions, then this can pose a problem. Think of it like having a non-stick frying pan. And if the surface gets scratched, things are more likely to stick and it's sort of similar with blood vessels and the development of a clot. So this is having sticky blood essentially, where some people have genetics or medical conditions or are on certain medications that just makes their blood more likely to clot. But here lies the way in preventing the clots from happening in the first place. Let's go back to these three factors now. So we can prevent the blood from pooling and getting stagnant by getting our calf muscles to squeeze and to squeeze and keep that blood moving. And that means in real life, on long haul flights, getting up and going for a walk around, avoiding the middle seat on a flight so that you can do that, taking breaks on long car journeys. All of this can let your calf muscles squeeze and keep the blood pumping and prevent stasis. Now preventing damage to your veins is crucial. And one of the quickest wins that you can get from that is if it applies to you, is stop smoking or don't smoke at all in the first place. Now there are other situations where we can't avoid the damage that's going to happen, like if you're going for an operation or you have an unfortunate injury. But all I'd say in that situation is make sure to follow the post-op advice of what your doctor gives you. So the thicker the blood is, the more likely it is to clot. And a very simple way to keep the blood that little bit thinner is actually just to drink lots of water. Drinking water can thin the blood a little bit and prevent it from being overly clotty for a want of a better way of putting it. Now, all of these things are to prevent you and lower the chances of you having a clot or a DVT. But what if you're already having symptoms? How do you know if it's a leg cramp, a pulled muscle or something more serious? So let's discuss the symptoms of a DVT so you know what to look out for and also two clinical signs and tests that you can do at home to see if you might have one. Now we know that DVTs by and large occur in the deep veins of the back of the leg. So poking yourself in the calf will probably be a bit sore. Now the blockage of that vessel also causes a back pressure which might cause other veins to become a bit swollen and more visible but also that back pressure causes the leg to become swollen and tight and tense. 
Now, if you go to your doctor, there's a couple of signs most of them will look for, and these are things that you can actually check for at home. Pitting edema is looking for excess fluid from that back pressure that might be in the foot. Think of it exactly like if you were poking dough. When you put your finger in and take it away, it leaves an indentation. It's very similar actually to what happens when you poke someone's foot. It leaves that indentation where your finger was. That's pitting edema. So Holman's sign is where you stretch the calf muscle and if you've got a clot, it can be quite tender and quite sore. But there are a few caveats here. Just because it's tender and sore doesn't necessarily mean it's a clot. And be careful not to overdo it because you might actually cause a cramp and cause pain and in the end be none the wiser. So basically, if you're concerned about a clot, get a professional to have a look at it, please. But to go right back to the start of this video, why did I call a DVT a ticking time bomb? Well, the answer lies in what the doctor does when he or she thinks you might have one. If your doctor is concerned that you have a DVT, they'll do a couple of things. They'll book you an ultrasound scan, a scan to see if there's actually a clot there, but they'll also do something else. By and large, they'll start treatment with a blood thinner tablet before they even have the diagnosis. So why is it they do that? The biggest danger of a DVT is if it gets unstuck, if it gets dislodged, because its next destination is your lungs. It's like a rogue firework that goes off and it travels along your blood vessels to find some part of your lung to get stuck in. And if that happens, that can be bad news. So rather than wait to see if it's a clot or not, the safest thing is just to get the blood thinners on the go there and then, just on the off chance that it could be a clot. But here's the thing, for some people, DVTs are actually silent. In other words, they don't cause much in the way of symptoms at all. And the first time that the person goes to the doctor is when the clot has dislodged and moved to their lungs and caused problems. Now to recognize the signs of a pulmonary embolism, a clot in your lung, have a look at this video that I've made here where I go through a classic case from start to finish. What happened? How did it happen? And how was it treated? Hopefully you enjoyed today, leave a comment, subscribe if you can, and hopefully I'll see you over there.